truly dominant dogs for me, I wouldn't say a dog is like truly, truly dominant unless he's exhibiting this trace, this, the, those traits across a wide variety of these spectrums, all right? So most people, when they say, oh, my dog's super dominant, what their dog is is either fearful or uh, their dog's just kind of learn to be dominant in specific scenarios in order to get his way. Hey guys, how's your chill canine? Today let's talk dominant dogs, all right? That is a topic you hear discussed a lot in dog training and dog psychology circles. You hear this dog is a dominant dog or that dog's a dominant dog. So let's really talk about what is a dominant dog? Do you have a dominant dog? Let's find out. So if you know anything about me, you know I have a wide range of training experience, everything from your high drive, super intense working dogs, all the way down to the family pet, kind of everything in between. We deal with a lot of behavioral problems here. We do a lot of working dogs here. Um, so we see a lot of different behaviors, including dominance in specific contexts. So I'm pretty comfortable talking about this topic. You know, I've dealt with a lot of those dogs. You know, I've been bitten by, you know, some of those dogs. So I, I know a little bit about it. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. So, what is dominance? Dominance is the willingness to exercise power and to prevail within a social hierarchy, okay? So when we apply this to dogs, for me, I'm gonna define a, do a, a dog as exhibiting the trait of dominance when a dog is willing to either threaten or actually commit violence to get what he or she wants within a specific situation, all right? so. The only exception to that will be a dog that's obviously backed into a corner and you know is in a state of fight or flight. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about a dog who willingly engages in a social situation and either threatens or is willing to actually commit violence in order to get what he or she wants. So if you know anything about dogs and dog training, dogs are kings of context. We tend to view everything as it either is or it is not. And that's a mistake with dogs. He's either friendly or he isn't. He's either dominant or he isn't. Dogs can be friendly in very specific contexts, like out in public, and they can be very unfriendly in specific contexts, like in a specific room, in your house, in the car, right? To the extent that they're actually willing to bite somebody where they normally would accept affection from that person, right? And you can apply that to a vast penelope of the behaviors that, that, that dogs offer, including dominance, right? So dogs are not, in general, again, we're speaking in generalities, there are exceptions to the rule. They're not just generally dominant or generally not. Dogs can exhibit that trait in very specific contexts, and then outside of that context, not exhibit that trait. So that's what you kind of have to understand about it. The first and most common context that we see that trait being exhibited in, and probably the one that you're most familiar with, is food, okay? Resource guarding, food, right? This is a very common problem. Um, you see a lot of dogs do this, whether it's with other dogs, whether it's with people, both, right? Dog is a sweetheart. We just had a lab leave here that was, was in here for a private session. He's a sweetheart. Anyone can pet him, touch him, play with him. The second his food becomes involved, he's bitten both his parents, he'd bite anybody over a bone, you know, to the point where he'll actually, it's not because they're trying to take it, it's like, if it's even in the room, he will go after somebody if they come in the room and he sees his food being prepared, for instance. So it's, it's to that level. And it's a common problem. You see it a lot, food aggression. And it certainly is a form of dominance. The dog values these, re this, we call it resource guarding, but for me, it's a dominance trait, right? The dog values this resource enough that he's willing to either fight for the resource or threaten to fight for the resource. There's certainly some dogs that will just growl over the food and not actually do anything, but they're still threatening you. They're still saying, hey, I'll hurt you. Whether or not they mean it is another thing. But for me, this is a common context and, and one that you see a lot of dogs exhibit that, that, that dominance over. And with some dogs, it's very easily curable. And with some dogs, of course, it's a pervasive problem that aff afflicts them for their entire life. And the owner has to know kind of how to handle them around that. The dog in our videos, Vasco, for instance, is a wonderful example of that. You always are careful with him around his food. You manage him around that problem um, and, and you're very careful with it. Now let's talk about toys. So toys kind of fall into, all this stuff falls into resources, really, right? But dominance is, 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 is dominance and resource guarding are, to me, resource guarding, like I've already said, is, is a, a, um, a derivative of a dominant mindset in a specific state, okay? So toys for me is another thing, right? You see it a lot. 
Dog has a toy, he will bite you over the toy. Outside of that, he's a sweetheart. You know, he doesn't care if you put your hand in his bowl when he's eating, but that toy, he loves that toy or, or those, whatever he picks up, happens to pick up. It could be a Kleenex or anything, and he will bite you over it, right? So outside of that context, he's fine, but he values toys or things that he picks up off the ground, including Kleenexes and socks and whatever, in such a, to such a degree that he's willing to, you know, exert physical force to enforce his will to possess that specific thing. Space, okay? Space can be a small space like his little bed, or it could be a big space like your entire property, right? <laughs> You'll often see dogs that really are very, um, very protective, and I shouldn't say protective, are very dominant about their space, right? Like if, if, if they perceive that you're encroaching on a space that they've perceived as valuable, they're willing, again, to threaten you or to engage in violence, right? I'm not talking about a dog who's like, you know, uh, a little bit nervous and, and, and fear aggressive and you come into the house and you, whoa, 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 No, that dog's goal is to drive you away because he's perceiving you as a threat. I'm talking about a dog who voluntarily says, hey, that's mine, get out of there, right? Or get away from there or I will hurt you, okay? So space is big. We've, we've had dogs before that, you know, like literally, if he's sitting over there and you come and sit over here, he'll nail you just for that, right? Because he's he's got this big bubble around him and it's not that he's scared, it's that, hey, this is my space and you coming and sitting over there is a disrespect to my perception of what belongs to me, right? That's the difference. You have to think of do dominance as an offensive mindset, right? I know a lot of people be like, no, those are fear-based behaviors. I'm not talking about fear-based behaviors. I'm talking about voluntary offensive mindsets. That's my food. I'm not talking about the dog in the corner eating and he thinks somebody's gonna come and take his food and he's just lashing out because he's starving and he wants to eat. I'm talking about the dog that says, there's food being prepared and you're over there. You know what, get the hell out of here. I'm gonna nail you over that. That's what I'm talking about. Offensive mindset. That's what dominance is, okay? Um, so space is a big one. You see that a lot. Um, a lot of truly dominant dogs, right? So for me, dogs that only exhibit that this trait in one of these areas, I wouldn't rate them as truly dominant. Like they're exhibiting dominance, but they're not like overall dominant. What I see in like dogs that are really like in general dominant in their nature, the space one is big. The space one is big. Toys and food generally is also there to some degree, but the space one is huge. They really love their space and they're willing to fight to maintain their 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 respect, you know, they're in that space. Dogs, okay, so I put dogs there because there are some dogs that are only dominant with other dogs and not with humans. It's a very common thing that I've seen, right? So, you know, the dog will exhibit control over an area um, in terms of like, let's say you have, uh, like I have a female who's really, uh, you know, wherever she happens to be, if there's another female there, you know, she'll go and bow up that female, if that female does anything other than completely surrender to her, you know, she will, she will exert violence on that dog if allowed, right? Or threaten the violence. And, you know, so dominance within dogs is common. You'll see when two dogs meet, they kind of stand over each other. They kind of try to put their head above the other one's back. Sometimes you'll see one give in. Sometimes you'll see them, neither of them give in and then things escalate. So dominance in relation to dog on dog interaction is a very common thing. And of course you see it more in some breeds than in others. Oh my God, Hash, you're being breed racist. So social pressure and affection. Okay, so this is big. I've seen and dealt with many dogs that deal with social pressure by, or their perception that you're pressuring them socially by exerting um, uh, uh, by exerting violence or either the threat of violence upon you, okay? So for instance, hey, you've got to sit. That's a big one, right? No, I'm not going to sit. And in fact, because you, I perceive that you're trying to make me sit, I'm going to come after you, okay? That's, that's a very common one. You see that a lot in dogs that have actually learned that that's a, a response, a, a, an acceptable response to any kind of social pressure they don't like. I've seen dogs that if the owner even says no to them, they'll literally come and attack the owner. Very common problem, unfortunately. Affection. Believe it or not, you run into a lot of dogs that will exhibit, um, you know, aggression 
related to affection, right? So they'll demand affection. It's very common. Again, this is offensive. This isn't an unwilling dog that you're forcing affection upon. This is a dog that comes up to you and says, hey, pet me. And you're petting them and then, you know, halfway through all of a sudden they'll start growling at you and looking at you. It's a very common problem, right? And, or you stop of petting them and then they become aggressive towards you because you stop petting them. Again, a dog who's willing to be, um, to exert that physical force because of something in relation to affection. It's not always the same thing. Sometimes it's because you stop. Sometimes it's because you started and then halfway through they decided that, you know what, I don't like it anymore. And instead of leaving that space, they say, you know what, now you're gonna get it. See that a lot. And then last but not least, work, okay? Now, you'll see a lot of dogs that exhibit dominance in the work. And this is the kind of dominance that we, as dog trainers, like to see, okay? So typically you'll see it a lot in bite work, all right? The dog's biting and any kind of challenge that the decoy poses to the dog, he turns it up a notch to fight the decoy, for instance, right? So you see a lot when, when people say, oh, that dog's so dominant in his bite work, right? Or, he, or he's super dominant in protection. You see it in the barking, the posture, the tonality of the barking, right? Big, deep barks. The dog is taking the space. He's daring the decoy to move. He wants the decoy to move. He wants to fight with the decoy. He's not just doing it because he thinks he has to do it. He's not doing it because he's reacting to what the decoy is doing. He's doing it because he's engaging with the decoy. He's showing that dominant behavior in the barking. And then in the grips, the same thing. He's trying to dominate. He's trying to prevail over the decoy. He's not just doing something to, to, to like win his toy or you know he's not just biting to win his to win, win, win the sleeve he's not just biting you know out of kind of a, 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 an avoidance behavior he's biting because he wants to bite he's taking the fight to the decoy and he's he's actually trying to get to the man he's not just trying to get to the equipment it's kind of hard to explain it on video you kind of have to see it and feel it to know what I'm talking about it's the dog that when he's on the grip he's looking you in the eye and if you put any kind of any more pressure on him, he gives you one of those big swift shakes and tries to put you on the ground. And he always is trying to beat you in every sense of the word, right? So these are the dogs that we like. And with working dogs, you tend to see, uh, dog, with working dogs, especially if they're high quality working dogs that, that have really uh, intense drives and are really intense in the work, it's not uncommon that you'll see some of the dominance that we talked about in, in, in some, or even in, in, in some cases, all these spaces, okay? So, truly dominant dogs for me, I wouldn't say a dog is like truly, truly dominant unless he's exhibiting this trace, this, the, those traits across a wide variety of these spectrums, all right? So most people, when they say, oh, my dog's super dominant, what their dog is is either fearful or uh, their dog's just kind of learn to be dominant in specific scenarios in order to get his way. But when you say to him, hey man, that's not gonna work anymore, you know, the way that a, a trainer that knows what they're doing would say that to the dog, verbally, non-verbally, whatever, right? And he says, okay, I guess it's not gonna work anymore, I'll stop. For me, it's not a truly dominant dog. It is to some degree a genetic trait because I think a truly dominant dog is born, not made. But you can see dogs exhibiting that trait within one or, or more of these contexts because they've learned it, because the owner has kind of been a little bit ineffective in, in curbing that behavior and the dogs learned, hey, I can get my way, which is really what dominance is. I wanna get my way, right, in this specific area. But if you really think about it, right, a truly dominant dog, even if you try to stop him from getting his way, even if you make it uh, make a really serious consequence over getting his way in a specific area, maybe he loses that day, maybe he loses the next day, but he still tries again on day three. He still tries again on day 33, right? And you always have to be on your P's and Q's around that dog because he's very dominant. It's so, it's, bo it's bone deep in him and he will constantly attempt to exhibit that trait if you don't manage him and maintain the training on him properly, right? And those dogs are actually quite hard to live with. You can certainly do it and I know a lot of people that have and I have to some degree with certain dogs, um, but you, you could not have an off day with those dogs because they will, in some cases, put you in the hospital if, you're, if they catch you slipping. So you don't want to get caught slipping with a dog like that. Um, but thankfully they're rare, 
they are rare. I, I don't think there's that many truly dominant dogs and I've seen a lot of them. What you do get is a lot of the bratty behaviors and then you get handlers trying to make excuses for their inability to deal with those behaviors by saying, oh my God, he's so dominant. And then you know, you come and you say, hey, no, stop that. He's like, oh, okay, sir, I'll stop. Well, you know, he might be exhibiting the trait of dominance, but for him, it's not, it's not supernatural. It's not really who he is, okay? But in the working dogs, I mean, I'm gonna segue a little bit and talk about breeding. Um, you wanna for sure breed the dominance into the dogs because that independence, that willingness to fight for, for things that they want to have, is a, is a necessary trait in order to maintain the hardness and, and the strength of the working dogs. If you only breed compliant dogs with each other, you get softer and softer dogs until you basically end up with border collies, you know, and that's really not what you want for, for, for multi, for, for dual purpose type dogs, which is what anybody who's breeding German Shepherds or Belgian Malinois should be looking for, Dutch Shepherds too in their breed. All right guys, I hope you liked it. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. We have a vast suite of training courses available online, shieldk9.ca, check us out. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you. See you later.